Now, I think a, a lot of the players and former players out there have a problem with the fact that the referee ran off the pitch without shaking hands. And the etiquette they had an issue with, and maybe he kind of knew he had made a mistake. Dave, so. Well, yeah, I mean, this, this is the problem. But Austin, what it does highlight is maybe they need to look at the protocols. They need to look at the, the whole process here. And in such a crucial game, do they say you can use the, the TMO for any decision which you think is such a significant decision it could seriously affect the outcome of a game? I think you've got to give the TMO to the referee. The referee has to be in complete control of it. And interestingly enough, actually, it highlights how good our referees are here in the UK because we use the TMO a lot better, a lot quicker. We make far fewer mistakes than we've seen during the World Cup. So I think we have to give our referees credit because they've had lots of practice. They've got their protocols in place here. Obviously, at the World Cup, we've seen massive issues with the TMO, how long it's been taking and how it's delivered. But also, you know, in respecting the referee as well, in hindsight, it's, a, it's an easy thing to, decision to make. That was a real instantaneous thing that happened. It happened three or four things, as you've just explained, Ben, happened really, really quickly. And he's got to make a decision. And then it's up to him, and that autonomy rests with the referee. Well, and unfortunately, I, I, it costs Scotland. I genuinely feel for him a bit, because all the ex-players and everyone's calling for him never to referee an international game again. And I know some of that's about his reaction of running off the field, and only he knows why he did that. But to say someone who made a mistake in a game, you know, a lot of players, me included, have made big mistakes in World Cups. But you know, you've got to, you, it's a human game, you're going to get problems. I, I just think that, you know, that TMO protocol, everyone's been saying we shouldn't go to the TMO as much, and now we're saying we should. So it's, there's just got to be a com bit of common sense, which was the point I was making about on that occasion, maybe the TMO could have come in and, and helped him out with that call. We should take the positive, by the way, that Scotland played really well, and it was great to see them compete against an Australian team that everyone was like really tipping to make the final and possibly win this thing. So congratulations to them on that front. Okay, mate, you look at the semi finals and it's dominated by the Southern Hemisphere. How big is that gap between them and us, and, and how do we actually close it? Yeah, well, there's obviously a bit of a gap because, you know, they're the ones in the knockout stages still, and, and we're the ones sat at home. So there is a, there is a gap. Um, I think the core skills that they're showing at the moment under pressure, um, playing at high speed, high tempo, is obviously what's, you know, setting them apart. So for us, we need to go away um, to a man, just looking at the England guys, we need to go away, work hard on those core skills. I think if you look at us individually, which guys would you put in a World 15? Probably not too many. Um, how, many how many would you put in a Lions squad, uh, a starting team? Probably not as many as we'd like. So, you know, individually we need to go away, work hard on our skills so, so that we are pushing for, for these, for these honours like Lions. So much has been said about style of play. And, and you look at the quarterfinals once again, New Zealand scoring nine tries, Australia scoring five tries yesterday. They clearly play a more expansive style of rugby. Do you think, and we've seen it at times over the Six Nations, do you think England need to play that way? Yeah, I think, I think we, we've shown we can play that, well, uh, that way. Um, in the Six Nations, we, we scored a bucket load of tries, playing a really good brand of rugby, uh, great shape and attack, um, but also showing, showing the tenacity and, and the way we defend uh, when, when we play for England. So, yeah, like I said, it's the core skills. I think we need to go away. Um, individually and keep working on them um, and keep showing for our club um, that, w that we are getting better. Um, we'll take a lot from, from this World Cup. Um, you know, for me, it's a, it's a World Cup under my belt. Um, great experience that I've learned so much from, um, even though we did go out earlier than we wanted to. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's just, like I said, going back, working as hard as I can on these core skills and trying to make myself the best player I can. And I honestly believe that I can be pushing for, for Lions and um, being considered along, among these great, um, world-class players. So that's what I'll continue to do. How impressed were you by the All Blacks in destructing France at the weekend? Mate, they, they were absolutely fantastic. And, and they, they'll acknowledge that themselves. It was one of those nights where everything went well for them. Um, we all have it every now and then. Not, not often enough, probably for some people. I certainly didn't. But um, they, it just it went well. And, and every pass went to hand. Their accuracy was fantastic. They... they got on a roll, and, and I've, I've said quite honestly, I reckon they would have put 40 points on themselves. Because I don't think any defence, <laughs> I don't think any defence is able to stand up to when you get that sort of quick ball and you get that accuracy of passing and the support play. And it was great to watch. They looked like they were enjoying themselves. And after all, it's sport and you want to get out there and have fun. And then they certainly did. OK, let's talk rugby. How impressed were you with the South Africans against Wales at the weekend? They were, they were unbelievable, weren't they? 
Well, unbelievable is a, is a stretch. Uh, oh, they, they, sorry, they, no, they were better. They, they, they were better. I was uh, trying to talk you up. Uh, <laughs> I know, and, and, and I'm trying to talk us down. So, <laughs> no, the All Blacks were unbelievable. Uh, we, were, we were a bit better, you know. Um, I think uh, Wales literally started like they should. They spread the ball beautifully. Uh, they took us on in the areas where I think we were a bit weak. Um, and we managed to, you know, last gasp tackle them. Uh, and, and stop them from scoring. So it was only a one-point game at halftime, and I think we just had enough, you know, off the bench and then a little, lovely little reverse pass from Dwayne, Dwayne Vermeulen. But that's, that's how close the margins were. Mose, you've obviously been watching from, from a distance. Um, how do you rate South African's chance? Oh, they're, they're, they're a good team. They've got a great history and tradition. They've got big, 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 strong men. I mean, I was looking, actually, they're very, very similar to the panel we got there. You've got some big, strong men back in the, back in the studio. In fact, if I could just take this opportunity to say thanks to the, the studio panel for doing their bit for New Zealand tourism, you know. The Lord of the Rings, we know we're the Lord of the Rings countries. These guys have got a Lord of the Rings theme going on in there. It's awesome. You've got the orc on one end. You've got, like, that enormous tree man on the other. And in between, you've got some sort of a cross between a hobbit and a dwarf. I think it's fantastic. So thank you. But South Africa, great team, yeah. <laughs> OK. Oh, wow, where do I go from that? Brilliant. OK, predictions. Martins, the semi-finals, how do you see them going? I don't know. We don't want to make predictions, rugby players. We don't know anything. We never get those tipping competitions. We never win those. So, I don't know. I'd, I'd, my, my heart says New Zealand, and kind of my heart says Argentina as well, you know? So, uh, New Zealand-Argentina final, I think it'd be wonderful. I mean, thank goodness we've managed to separate England and Argentina, because that could just tee off, couldn't it, with all that's going on <laughs> geographically and stuff like that. So, um, I'm hoping New Zealand-Argentina. OK, Bobby, predictions? Well, I'm going to go, you know what, it's, it's the end stages of, of a Rugby World Cup, so I'm not going to go with anything to do with, with head here. I'm going to go heart only. I'm going to say South Africa get through, and Argentina as well. I think they've been outstanding. They're, they're using the space in the field. They're using big, strong men. The Australians, I felt, were, were uh, lucky to come through against Scotland, a, a, a really charged up uh, quality Scottish outfit. And... Um, I think uh, South Africa versus them would be a great final. Just got to say a massive thank you to Andrew Mertens, Bobby Skinstad, Mike Brown and the crowd here at the show. Yeah.